What's up? Good morning, guys. In today's video, I'm going to be going over my top 10 tips for increasing, potentially doubling your Shopify conversion rate. So these are really, really important fundamental things and key features of what make a really high converting Shopify store. So let's not waste any time and let's get into this video. guys again my name is Hannah Gardner if you're new to the channel I talk about building brands mainly on Etsy and Shopify I have built both of them and I have been documenting my journey here on this channel and just kind of sharing back everything I've learned along the way and yes that includes my wins and my losses and trust me there has been a lot a lot a lot of losses. If that's something that you're into, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel and make sure you're commenting your questions down below so we can help you out. My first tip, because Shopify is not like Etsy or Amazon where it automatically collects reviews for you, on Shopify, you have to find a way to essentially get reviews on your Shopify store. So I'm gonna just share real quick what I use. I use a software called Luke's, Luke's Reviews Auto Review Generation Software. It is awesome. And the reason why I emphasize this and why this is so important is because when you, if you have no social proof, it's really, really hard to take cold traffic, meaning, you know, when you're running ads on Facebook or Instagram, maybe TikTok, and you're bringing new people into your store for the first time that don't know you, have no report with you, and you have no social proof, maybe you have a smaller social media because you just opened your store, it's really, really important that you start collecting reviews right off the bat, and not only just written reviews, but photo reviews and also video reviews. So Luke's is a really good platform for this because not only does it send out emails automatically on your behalf 14 days after purchase but then you can also set it up to offer an upsell so you can potentially get a second sale once they leave a review a photo review or a video review then that entices them to leave a review because if they do leave a photo or a video they get another 20% off now Luke's has a million and one customizations of how you can set this up for you personally in your store. But I also really love them because Luke's now integrates with Google. If you are gonna be running like ads on Google, like Google shopping campaigns, then your reviews will show up on Google as well. And I don't have a, a certain metric of how much reviews and social proof ups your conversion rate, but I can tell you it's gotta be like a big bulk of why people are gonna buy from you. If real life people can see other real life people wearing the thing that you're selling or using the tool that you're selling, and they see video and testimonial, that is the number one thing that's going to increase your conversion rate. My number two is having some type of pop-up form that pops up immediately when someone enters your store. And usually what the big players or the bigger companies do is offer an offer <laughs> inside that form. So if they sign up for your email or your text messages, then they get say 15% off and then they get that discount code only once they sign up for that form. A lot of new Shopify owners that don't understand marketing usually go, oh my gosh, this is so annoying. Why would I ever want this on my website? But what you need to understand is 10, 20, 30, maybe even 40% of your sales come from follow up marketing. Out of every 100 people that actually come to your website, you may only have three, four or five conversions, meaning you might only get three or four to five sales out of 100 people that come to your website. So if you're collecting the majority of those emails and SMS or phone numbers, just because someone doesn't buy on day one doesn't mean that they won't buy in the future. So you have a, a higher probability of someone purchasing again if you can retarget them with email and SMS. One important thing to note with this is that whatever pop-up form that you go with, I personally use a company called Attentive. And why I really like Attentive is because they really, really follow the rules and regulations with text messages because there is a lot of legal things that you need to know when you're sending text messages to your customers and you don't want to put yourself in a bad situation where someone could potentially get upset at you because you're sending them text messages even though they opted in for it. So Attentive is really good on that legal side of making sure that everything is set up in the standard of SMS world. But then also their pop-up forms are really, really fast. They load extremely fast and the pages switch really fast. So you can see here, we're going from an email 
to a phone number to get my code. And once I get my code here, I'm getting an email reminder of that code and I'm also getting an opt-in text messages. So maybe you miss them in the text, you can at least, they can at least check their email and it's there. So you're just heightening your probability of them getting that discount code and then also, of course, making a sale. Number three, I was having a lot of trouble with my customer service. And I'm not just talking about email inquiries, customer service. I'm talking about getting comments on Instagram photos or getting DMs on Instagram, getting comments on my ads. So when I'm running ads on Facebook, you know, sometimes you get a lot of comments and people are asking questions. Sometimes you get key private messages on Facebook Messenger, right? Those are all considered customer service inquiries. People are asking you questions, they're inquiring, they're sending you a message about something, which means probably are interested in buying something or they're having a problem with their order. And if you have the ability to access all of your customer service in one place, that is super valuable because you're not only serving your customers faster, also just giving your customers a better customer experience. And when customers have a better customer experience, because trust me, there is a certain amount of people that if you give a certain level of customer service, they're going to be so loyal to you that they're gonna come back time and time again. I know customer service is always the most annoying part of business, for me it was at least, but this is a key fundamental. So I actually use a company called Gorgeous. Gorgeous is an e-commerce based help desk that is similar to Zendesk, but Gorgeous is actually specifically for e-commerce Shopify store owners. So what does that mean? That means that anywhere that you get a customer service message, this is actually crazy. During their onboarding, I was like, whoa, this is, this is actually insane. That means if you get a comment on one of your Facebook ads or you get a DM on Instagram, or if you get an email inquiry, it all gets into one database. Not only can you sort your inquiries but based off the, the channel in which you got that message, but you can sort them based off importance because what Gorgeous does is it integrates with your Shopify store and it pulls all the history and all the past sales data of your previous customers. So say you get a negative comment on a Facebook ad, Gorgeous can tag that comment and then you can go in there and troubleshoot and respond to that comment or delete that comment right away on your Facebook ads because Gorgeous is going to catch it. And then also because of that integration, it's gonna show you all the previous sales data of that customer that left that comment if there's somebody that had purchased in the past. You can put context behind that conversation or how you're gonna open up that conversation. You can also, in the help desk solution, so a lot of people you'll see here, there's a little chat bot here. Um, you can have that on your website and you can customize this so even if you're not available 24 seven, you can make the, the customer feel like that they're getting their problem solved a lot faster. So people really don't like searching for customer service. And so that just, just having that button there builds so much loyalty and so much trust that if they do have an issue or they do have a question, they can get their problem solved right away. So you can set this up in a bunch of different ways. You can set it up with a bunch of FAQs right off the bat. You can make it so it, they can go right into a chat if you do have someone to answer that customer service right away. Or you can set it up to where they can just leave an e email inquiry, but they didn't actually have to go look for your contact page. So everything gets synced right inside of that chat. There is so many little details and things that you can do from the campaigns to the customization of your chatbot form, from being able to get to your customers as soon as possible in all different places. And I can tell you, when you start spending hundreds of dollars, if not thousands of dollars a day on Facebook ads, the really important thing here with this is making sure that you're commenting back and responding to every comment that you get. Because when people are looking at your ads, they're looking at the comment sections to see if you're a scam or a fraud or something like that. So in case you ended up having a bad customer experience with someone and they go blast you on your Facebook ads, that's really, really bad because you're paying for those ads to be seen. So you need to be going in and answering those negative comments if you do get any negative comments. At least if you go back in there and either hide them or comment back, to you know, show people that you are being attentive, apologizing for whatever went wrong and trying to fix the solution to their problem. If you can do that and show that type of social proof, that will help your ads immensely. And be, when you start running ads and you start running split testing ad sets, 
and you set, have say 50 different ad campaigns running, it's really hard to go in manually into Facebook Business Man Ad Manager and figure out where all the comments are living. <laughs> but Gorgeous is gonna fix all of that for you. I was like completely impressed with the software. It's like, I don't even know, this is like, customer service heaven or something. <laughs> Let's go into number four. We're gonna be moving into the product listings here. So a key thing to know with your Shopify product listings, on the first load, when your product page loads for the first time, all the most important information about your product listing should be displayed at the top. So people should not have to be searching for the most important, important information. So things like the title of your listing, the price, the variations that you offer, the add to cart or the buy now button should all be at close to the top where people don't have to search for any, any of that information. Ideally, it will show on the first load, meaning they don't actually have to move their finger in their phone. It, it just pops up right away. This has been proven time, time and time again um, that if all that really important information and there's just a buy button without anyone having to do any work because we are lazy, fundamentally as individuals, um, that will help you increase your conversion rate on your product page listing. With that being said, number five is that making sure that your main product image, I usually say that it should not be a lifestyle image. Lifestyle image meaning something like this, where it's being showcased on a model, maybe you see the model's face, maybe there's like some aesthetic background. That type of photography is really, really good to live in the product listing. But as far as what the main product image should be, it should be only only what the person is going to buy. So a main product image like this, well, can get distracted really, really fast. And you want the core focus of the main image to only be that product. Even if you do do a staged image where maybe it's not just a white background, I do believe that's still okay and could actually help you. You just wanna make sure that whatever it's showing, the main focal point should only be the product that they're actually purchasing. And then when they scroll through the other images, then they can see all the other pretty pictures. But the for but as far as the main image, the main image should be exactly what they're buying. So there is zero confusion when they hit that buy button of what they're actually getting. This leads me to number six, which is having a bolded out title for your product. So it's not, again, this is not like Etsy, this is not like Shopify, where fundamentally, you know, people don't really care what the title is, but on Shopify, you are building a brand, you're building, you're trying to build brand loyalty. You need to give your product some names and you don't want your names to be too long. You want it to match your branding, your overall branding, your brand vibe of your store. So make sure your, your title of your products is actually bolded out so people can associate that item with a name so then it can be rememberable in the future. Leads me to tip number seven, which is having a branded storefront. So. Branding is a very perceptual based thing. And if you're not good at it, I recommend that you hire somebody to help you with this. Because if you're new at building Shopify stores for the first time, usually we don't just come out of the gates like crushing it with our branding, but really some basic branding tips 101. It's very similar to interior design. An interior design will tell you you know, when you go to Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever, you're gonna go pick out your color palette and essentially when you go there, you're gonna pick out a bunch of color samples and when you put all those colors together, fundamentally it should make sense and those are gonna be co considered all of the accent colors that you're gonna have throughout your house. So as you walk throughout your house, everything blends together, all the colors, all the textures, everything makes sense. So it's very similar with a website your brand vibe, your brand colors, your branding, your photography, whatever those colors are, that those tones should be consistent throughout your entire brand. I use Canva for a lot of branding things when it comes to logos, when it comes to design, graphic design. I use Canva probably every day for email campaigns, social media. That is a really, really good place. It's like Photoshop for beginners. And they have thousands and thousands of templates that literally kind of teach you how to do graphic design since these pre-built templates are showing you what fonts look good together, what colors look good together. I'll say even if you're using Canva and you're very new to graphic design, 
you still can end up with some amateur looking designs or color schemes or fonts. I only know this because I was the person that did everything myself when I first started out. And I look at my branding and my logos and the stuff that I would put out like three years ago compared to today and it's completely different. For all your Shopify store should be consistent throughout. The branding should be fluid. It should be speaking to your customer avatar. So whatever specific customer avatar you're chasing after, they should get it, understand the vibe within the first three seconds of your store. It should be attractive in the eyes of whoever that customer is. Please me move to number eight. We're gonna take it back to the product listing page. This actually came from another YouTuber that owns an agency, a marketing agency, and is running ads and spending thousands and thousands of dollars a day on ads. And what he said is that one thing to know, it's really, really important to make sure that you have a bolded buy now or add to card button on your product listing page. So a lot of times people hollow out that button just to make it look pretty or something, but it's really, really important that it's bold, it's in your face, you don't miss it, you don't have to search for it, you don't want it to be hard to see. That is the most important button on the screen. You need to make sure that it is a focal point of the screen when they see it. Another tip that he also said is to make sure that your banner, this is something that I also just did, but I didn't realize that this is actually, there is some legitimacy behind it, is making sure that your banner is shown all the time. So if you have a free shipping banner, if you have a free shipping after paying $75 banner, whatever your banner is or your shop announcement is, make sure that's shown on every single page, not just your home page. So sometimes when you're running ads, you're running ads directly to the product page. And some Shopify themes, they'll only show the banner on the home page. You wanna make sure that announcement, because that announcement is actually important, you wanna make sure that's shown on all of your pages especially your product pages and not just your home page. And finally, my last tip is to make sure that whatever Shopify theme you go with or whatever website builder you go with, that your load times of your Shopify store is extremely fast. If people have to wait literally more than two to three seconds for a store to load or a web page to load, you're already losing sales. So you wanna make sure that your store is optimized for load times and it's also optimized for mobile compatibility. So if your website does not look good on mobile and some of the core fundamentals of what I talked about in this video are not displaying on mobile view or it's hard to scroll through your pictures or it's hard to zoom into the pictures, you're gonna lose sales. People do not have patience and you might say three seconds isn't that long, but as of this tech world that we live in, people want everything yesterday. So everything should be seamless. Everything should load fast. Everything should be intuitive. People shouldn't have to search for things because you will lose attention very, very fast. So make sure your load times are fast. Make sure it's optimized for mobile because I will argue probably 60, 70, 80, maybe even 90% of your visitors are gonna be coming from mobile. Guys, that concludes my 10 tips to really increasing your Shopify conversion rate. I hope you enjoyed the contents, content, the contents, the con, the, I hope you enjoyed this video. <laughs> if you did, make sure you subscribe to the channel and comment any questions or any other value you have below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.